So, uh, we need a little explanation of partial fractions, right? To understand why a has to equal negative b, and especially where this one comes from. Okay. Well, this clearly simplifies to this, and that's not a, not an issue. Now, this has to equal one, no matter what the value of b is. Well, this means that a plus b times v. Well. A B minus big B little B is just going to be some number. It's not going to be changing. However, V does change so that A plus B times V will be changing unless A plus B is zero. Another way of saying that is since the rest of this numerator is constant and since the numerator is constant, a plus B times V can't be variable with V. And the only way that won't be variable with V is if A plus B is zero. So A plus B times V can't depend on V. If it did, that would make this numerator variable. It wouldn't be a constant mark. That means that A has to equal negative B, obviously. Okay, so since a is equal now to negative b, these two terms drop off, and these two terms have to add up to 1. Well, you set this equal to 1, and you conclude that, well, we factor the little b out, we get b times a minus b equals 1. And knowing that a and b are opposite, well, a minus b is then 2a. So 2a has to be 1 over b, a is 1 over 2b, and b is not 1 over 2b, 2, 1 over not 2b, negative 1 over 2b, right? So that's the idea of partial fractions. Numerator has to equal the numerator for all values of the variable. Everything follows from that.